It is often said that diversification is the only free lunch in investing. We are all familiar with the concept of the free lunch, where unusually we get something for nothing. We also hear a lot about the benefits of diversity. But how do we achieve proper diversification? Exactly what is the investor getting that is free? How do we quantify this? How do we, like these bears, get to eat this free lunch? And do we need the help of stock market bears as well as bulls to get a meal ticket to this free lunch? All will be revealed if you join us for the investment free lunch. Aperitivo. Harry Markowitz. The concept of the investment free lunch began in 1952 when a young economist, Harry Markowitz, published an article which would eventually win him a Nobel Prize as the inventor of modern portfolio theory. Before Markowitz, every investor had some concept of the trade off between risk and return. Extra return is paid for with extra volatility or uncertainty around that return. Hence, there was a linear relationship between risk and return. Investors would not get a free lunch, but instead only the return commensurate with the risk taken. What won Markowitz the Nobel Prize was his argument that an investor could reduce risk or volatility through diversification by investing in uncorrelated assets without any reduction in return. The concept of the investment free lunch, whereby through better diversification, more return could be bought for less risk, was to become an essential tool in modern wealth management. And to pasty, bake diversification. Investment diversification is often misunderstood. Most investors try to diversify, but usually end up in the same bull market rodeo, emboldened by stories of previous glories, riding too many former winners geared to the same previously bullish factors, many of which may not be relevant anymore. This is a high-risk strategy since all popular stocks could be highly correlated to each other, to the stock market and to low interest rates, and would either do well or alternatively very badly at the same time. When the bull runs out of control, the consequences can be disastrous. This is in fact fake diversification, investing in different assets which have many of the same risks, leading to a high risk feast or famine outcome the exact opposite of the free lunch and not at all what Markowitz had in mind regarding diversification. Premi, the race. Let us instead think about investment as a never-ending race for return. As conditions evolve, the leadership of the race will change. Some might do well, then lose momentum and fall back. Others might do nothing for a while and then put in a growth spurt. It's logical to spread your risk in this race over a variety of assets with different strengths and weaknesses. Know exactly what role each asset plays in different conditions and avoid the temptation to extrapolate recent performance, stop diversifying and think you have discovered the asset which will always be at the front of the race forever. This is a delusion. This does not mean that you should have a bet on every horse in the race, select assets indiscriminately, or ever investing assets which will never come to the front of the race. Diversification is different from partnering with assets that are always laggards. The key to proper diversification is investing only in assets offering attractive positive returns, but which deliver at different times, so that there's always something in your portfolio keeping you in the race. Seconde, the dance.
So instead of constructing a portfolio with assets that replicate the same return and risk characteristics, to eat the free lunch, we need to think of assets that move in a way that complement each other. We could think of this as a dancing couple, which through actions and reactions, which are often the mirror image or the inverse correlation of each other, nonetheless can result in overall harmony. Since the biggest risk to most investors is the direction of the stock market, we need to find assets which deliver at different times, but which don't hold back our overall return. Think of the portfolio manager as the choreographer of this investment dance. Contone, bonds and cash. Professional investors seeking diversification from equity funds that are highly correlated to the stock market have historically achieved this through also investing in government bonds, which usually do well in economic recessions when stock markets generally do badly, but interest rates usually fall. But more recently, as interest rates have risen from near zero, this traditional mixed portfolio has struggled since both bonds and equities have delivered negative returns at the same time. This has highlighted a need for more diversification in genuinely uncorrelated assets beyond just government bonds. Investors can also diversify through holding cash, which unless you are unlucky enough to invest uninsured deposits in a bank that goes bust will hold its nominal value. For the last decade, the real value of cash has been eroded by low interest rates and rising inflation. Cash will always reduce volatility, but often at the expense of return. This can result in the investor getting nowhere. Because volatility has been reduced at the cost of reducing return, there is no free lunch here. Insulata Shorts Argonaut is different from most active fund managers in that we also short stocks in the expectation that their prices will fall, in addition to taking long positions which we expect to rise in price. By having both long and short positions, we are backing our stock picking to pick losers as well as winners, rather than being reliant on the direction of the stock market. Over many years, we have been particularly successful at identifying stocks whose value has just been an illusion because they've been frauds like Steinhoff, Wirecard, NMC, overhyped like Beyond Meat, Oatly, Coinbase, Rivian, or just bad business models run by management who made bad decisions, like Cineworld, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, all destined to fail. When reality hits and the share prices have fallen to zero, we have generated positive uncorrelated returns for our investors. Whilst we are happy to profit from uncovering wrongdoing at companies run by crooked management, we short to have negatively correlated assets in the fund which offset the positively correlated assets in our long book. Like catamaran sailors leaning out into the wind to balance the boat, we want to offset our market exposure to generate a return profile which isn't correlated or dependent on the market direction. Only positive uncorrelated returns like those which we generate can help investors eat the free lunch of diversification. Formaggi e frutta An uncorrelated return Let's look at how this has worked in practice. Since the fund launched, there have been 70 months when the market delivered negative returns. The fund has delivered positive returns in 40 of these 70 months. Looking solely at negative market months, the fund has delivered a cumulative plus 53%, around 30% of its overall return. 
But if you were unlucky enough to hold the market only in negative months, you would have lost a cumulative 89%. Of course, short positions can also result in negative returns in positive months, but investors will benefit in these times from their exposure to other assets that are more highly correlated to the market. There are plenty of these. There are few proven uncorrelated assets. Dolce, the mathematical proof in the pudding. Now we are getting nearer to the end of our long lunch and anxiety might be rising about who might pay. We should prove that the lunch is after all free, that we get more return with less risk through diversification with uncorrelated assets. Let's demonstrate mathematically with two contrasting examples what this investment free lunch looks like. To do this, we need to blend the stock market return with two alternative assets, one with low volatility and one with low correlation. In our first example, suppose an investor has 50% of their portfolio allocated to the stock market. They then diversify by allocating the other 50% to a low volatility fund, which is half the beta of the market, but is 100% correlated. In other words, this low volatility fund goes up and down at the same time as the market, but with only half of the move each time. By blending with a fund half the volatility, the investor simply got the average volatility of the two assets and the average return. The same outcome could have been achieved holding one quarter of their portfolio in cash. There is no proper diversification achieved and no free lunch here. Return has been sacrificed for lower volatility. Suppose instead the investor allocates 50% to a low correlation asset. In our example, the Argonal Absolute Return Fund. Because the fund's return has been superior to the market, the return on the composite fund is better than the market return and much better than the low volatility fund and its composite. But this is not our main point because it may not be a free lunch if our fund also increases the volatility of the composite portfolio. If the lunch is free, extra return must come without higher volatility. Since the correlation of the fund to the market has been almost zero, delivering at different times and offsetting the market volatility, something rather wonderful happens. The volatility of the new composite portfolio using the low correlation Argonaut Absolute Return Fund falls by 35% more than the 25% reduction achieved when the low volatility fund was used. You might have expected a more volatile fund to add to volatility, but because the fund is not correlated, it results in lower volatility overall, as well as a better return. The low volatility fund just gave us the average volatility, but the low correlation Argonaut Absolute Return Fund gave us the free lunch. As we can also see from this distribution curve, using the fund as a diversifier has reduced the volatility of returns. Volatility has been lowered without sacrificing return through investing in uncorrelated assets. We have finally found Harry Markovitz's free lunch. Rejoice. Cafe. Assessing value. It is also important to point out that if the uncorrelated fund were to halve its volatility and halve its return, the investor would have to allocate double the amount to achieve the same diversification benefit. This is why it is always important to assess the impact of any asset on the overall volatility of the portfolio through looking not just at its intrinsic return and volatility, but also assessing the correlation of the asset to everything else in the portfolio. This is why low correlation assets with attractive returns are so much more valuable. 
DJ Stevo, not the flat track bully. In sports, we are all familiar with the concept of the flat track bully, a statistically elite sportsman who saves their best performances for weaker opposition, but who never seems to perform when the going gets tough. Well, we can reveal that the investment industry is full of flat trap bullies whose overall statistical reputation fails to capture how they perform in more difficult markets, on which there is often little analysis. Moreover, there is plentiful choice of actively managed funds that will go up and down at the same time as the market, but there is a scarcity of funds that have achieved attractive double-digit returns without any help from rising markets. Proper diversification through an allocation to the Argonaut Absolute Return Fund, or indeed any other asset that can replicate our uncorrelated attractive return profile, can help you eat that elusive free lunch. Buon appetito. To find out more, please visit our website or contact us at sales at argonautcapital.co.uk.